It's Math 151. We're going to do section 4.9, and we're going to talk about Newton's method. And Newton's method is a way to find zeros. So whatever, whatever function that I have, or at least approximations for zeros. If I say, when's that function equal to zero? Newton's method is a way for me to get really good approximations for it. Um, and here's, here's the idea with Newton's method, what, what we're doing. We have some function. Yeah, it looks maybe something like that. I draw it a little better. And there's the zero right there. Now I'm not really exactly sure uh, where it's at. Maybe it's something that I can't factor really easily or something like that. But what I do is I, I make a guess. So somewhere out here, which I think is kind of close to where the zero is at, I pick some point x sub zero. And then I get up on the actual function, right? So this is the y value, plug x sub zero into the function. And what I can do is I can find the tangent line, right? So I find the tangent line that goes through it. And then what I do is I set that tangent line equal to zero. And after I've set that tangent line equal to zero, you know, I could find like the, the slope of it and then write the equation of the line and then set it equal to zero and solve it. Now what I've got is this thing comes down here and it gives me a, a next guess and that's closer to the zero. So then I can do it again. In other words, I can come back up, get back up on this line, get the tangent for that, and then I get something even closer to it. And then I can just keep doing that until I feel like my estimate is close enough. So that's the, that's the idea. So let's think about how we could find um, the, the tangent line of a function. So if I have some function f of x, and we've, we've talked about how to do this, I know that the slope at that line, and let's say it at x sub zero, just because that's my... So if I have some equation, some function, the slope at this point is the steepness of the tangent line, right? And then I know that this point that's right here is the point x and then the y value I get by plugging that x value into the function. And so the way I can write the tangent line, that's that linear approximation line. So there it is right there. That's my linear approximation right there my tangent line. And we've talked about how to find it, how to get to it. Um, if you spend a little time with it, you'll see how to drive that formula. So this would be the equation of this first tangent line here that I drew. And then um, what I want to do is I want to set that equal to zero. So I'm going to say zero is equal to it. To see where it crosses Oop, where it crosses the x-axis. And if I solve this for zero, I can subtract uh, this from both sides. <clears throat> Divide both sides by the derivative. And this x right here, this is the, the zero that I'm trying to find. So I'll say that that's x sub one. Add that x sub zero to both sides. And now if you notice about this, um, if I have my guess, right, my x sub zero is my first guess, set the tangent line equal to zero and solve it, this x value, this x sub one, that's my next guess. And that generalizes. Uh, and what I mean by that is like, now if I have that first one, I could take it and I could plug it in to get the second one. In other words, I could do the process again from here, right, find the tangent line, set it equal to zero and get the next approximation. I get this one. Um, and I can keep doing that. And you can see how this, this process, it's, it's what's called an iterative, iterative process, right? Like we keep plugging it in um, to itself to get the next case and also how it generalizes. This is always one more than, than all this. Like if I know X sub one, I do this and I get X sub two. If I want x sub 3, I have to know x sub 2. 
and I get it to do that. So in general, uh, this would generalize to the nth term, x sub n, is one less than it. Not one less than it, but like one before it. So in other words, to get x sub 3, I need x sub 2, um, f of x sub 2, and f prime of x sub 2. I keep plugging it in to get it. Well, let's, let's actually do this with a process to see, see how it works. So again, this is our process. So these are our iterations for Newton's method. This is what we're going to use. So we have this um, function f of x is x cubed minus 3x plus 1. We're just going to look at the interval from 1 to 2. And is there a root in there? And if so, uh, we want to try and find an approximation for it. And our first guess will be 2, will be one end of the uh, one end of the interval. And I can check real quick if there's a root in there or not by plugging in these values. So like if I say uh, x is equal to 2 and then plug it in, you can see I get a positive value. And now I'm going to plug 1 into it. So I know that it, as this goes from 1 to 2, this goes from negative positive. So there's going to be a 0 in there. So let's figure it out. So I already know the function itself. I know the f of x part. I'm going to need the derivative of it. So 3x squared minus 3. And so my equation is um, to get x sub 1, I take x sub 0. I subtract the function at x sub 0 divided by the derivative at x sub 0. So in this case, x sub 0 is 2. That's our first guess. So um, x sub 1 will equal 2 minus f of 2 divided by the derivative of f at 2. And so I'm going to do this in my calculator. So I think uh, 2 is x. x is equal to 2. And now I'm just going to write this as basically this right here. So x minus um, the function So that's f of x divided by the derivative. But after my first iteration of Newton's method, I get uh, 1 and 2 thirds. Right? And if you want to write that just as a um, fraction, you can go, uh, go into the math menu and choose give me the answer as a fraction, 5 thirds. I'm going to plug, I'm going to get the second one. So instead of plugging in 2, I'm going to plug in that 5 thirds, right? I'm going to go 5 thirds minus f of 5 thirds over f prime of 5 thirds. And since I have this all in my calculator, I'm just going to store that in x. So now x is equal to 5 thirds in my calculator. And I'm just going to pull up that uh, thing that I typed in, that function that I typed in. There it is, right? x minus f of x divided by f prime of x. There's my next estimate. Wonder if I get a fraction answer for that. Ooh. Okay. So that's a pretty good, pretty good estimate. I'm going to go out five times with this. So I'm going to get out to uh, x sub five. And Newton's method converges pretty quickly in in most conditions doesn't always converge, but it, it usually does. So let's see, x sub 3 usually is a strong term. I'm going to store this in x. So now I plugged in x sub 2, and I got this, 5, 3, 2, 3, 9. Yep, so now I'm going to plug x sub 3 in to get x sub 4. And I get this. See, it's pretty close. So I got x sub 4. I'm just going to plug it back in and get x sub 5. And I get about 
eight, nine. Yeah, so I think that's probably a zero. How about I plug it in and see if it see if it works? So I'll let that be x. And what I mean is now I'm gonna see how close this is to an actual zero. So I stored that value in x. I'm gonna plug it back into the original function and see if it spits out zero. So x cubed. It's good enough for the calculator. <laughs> yeah, so that converged pretty quick, right? Like two was a ways off. I only had to re reiterate or run this through like one, one, two, three, four, five times, and I got down to that zero pretty quick. That's that's right close. Let's do another example. So I'm just going to keep the same function. Um, and I already have its derivative right here, and I'm going to say look at over the interval zero to one on this function, see if there's a root, and I'm going to use my first guess at x being zero. So I'm going to plug that in. My first guess is zero, x1. I'm just going to go out like three on this one and see what happens. Plug that in. And again, I'm not plugging it into the function. I'm plugging it into this, right? I'm, I'm setting that tangent line at zero, letting it slide back down, hit, and I'm finding when the tangent line is zero. So it looks like a third. I'll just go out three with this one and see what happens. So x sub two. So I'm going to store that answer in x. Now I'm now I'm plugging in a third. Uh, 0.3472 repeating. And I'm going to do it again. This iterative process, right? I'm plugging it back into itself. Three point three four seven two. Uh, let's just say 0.3473. So just after three tries, let's see how good that is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug that into the original function and see how close I am to zero. So that original function again, x cubed minus 3x plus 1. Okay, so right, this is in scientific notation. That e negative 9 means times 10 to the negative ninth. So grab this and move it, grab the decimal place and move it nine places to the left. So 0.805, that's really close to zero. It's just three little iterations and it got us really close to that root. So I'm going to um, use Newton's method to approximate the square root of two. So I'm gonna say uh, x equals square root of two, right? Square both sides, x squared equals two, subtract two from both sides. Um, so I have this x squared minus two equals zero. And it's positive or negative, right? Like if I plug in a negative root two, that would make this solve this as well. So what I have is root two is the solution to this equation, x squared minus two. Think about the shape of that. It's a parabola that looks like this. This point right here where it crosses uh, x is equal to square root of 2. So I'm going to use Newton method to make uh, an approximation for it. And I'm going to start at, um, I'm going to start at 2. So 2 is somewhere out here, right? So uh, I'm going to get my tangent line. It's going to come in. I'm going to come back up, get another tangent line, and keep zooming in on that, on that 0. So my first guess is going to be uh, 2 and my function is x squared minus 2. Its derivative is 2x. So my uh, my iterative process will be x sub n is uh, x sub n minus 1 minus function over the derivative. First guess is two. All right, let's get this in the calculator. So x is two, and I'm gonna then plug in my x minus the function, so x squared minus two, divided by the derivative, uh, two x. Be careful with your parentheses. Make sure you're 
put in parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. So my first hit then is 1.5. Uh, let's run it again. Store that in x. So now 1.5, I'm trying to get x sub 2. So 1.5 is my um, x n minus 1, x sub n minus 1. One point four one six repeating. I'll just do it one more time. Plug that value in. One point four one four two one five. I'm pretty close, you know, like square root of two. One point four one four two one. One, two, three, four, five. Like just doing this three times got me close to it, five decimal places close to it. It's amazing. Like, like it's it converges really quick. Here's the thing though, it doesn't always converge. Um, sometimes it wouldn't work. And if you if you look back to uh this picture of my function, I hope you can tell that like if I pick my x sub zero to be zero, I've got a I've got my tangent line looks like that, it's unsolvable. Like it, it never will come back and hit that X. This, this is gonna break down. So Newton's method can, if, if you don't pick this spot well, it can go nowhere. Here's some other things that can do. It could bounce around uh, and, and maybe like jump out of the interval that you're looking at. So like, let's say that my function looks like this and I'm trying to find this zero right here. But I pick like this is my first guess. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe even like this is my first guess right here. Notice my slope. Boom, that gets me there. That's going to converge to that zero. Like it's not necessarily going to find the closest zero. If, I'm, if I pick something closer to it, in this case, it would work. Uh, another thing that can happen, and if that just happens, you just pick a different point. So another thing that can happen might look something like this. So I pick my tangent point and I follow my tangent line and it gives me a zero. And so I pop back up and it gives me a new point and it comes across and it kicks me right back to here. <laughs> and I just bounce around forever um, and I never converge to one of the zeros, right? Because this would kick me back up to that point, back up to that point. You can get kind of in these loops with Newton's method too. Again, if that happens, just pick a different point. Like your, your initial assumption is not a good one. Just pick another one and give it another try. So here's an example uh, like that. So we have this, this function. Uh, we want to look for some zero in it. And we're going to make our first guess zero. So we're going to need the derivative. 3x squared minus 2. And we know that, you know, we know our method. So let's do this. Zero gets stored in x. And then my function, remember my, my Newton iterations, x minus the function itself. divided by the derivative. Cool, so if my first guess is zero, plug it in, my next guess gives me a one. Let's plug it in and get our next approximation. So now x is equal to one, so I'm gonna plug it back in. I get zero which I've already plugged zero in and it gave me one. So if I were to do this again, it would give me one. If I were to do it again, it would give me zero. It's just gonna bounce back and forth between the zero and the one. So um, as you can see, that first initial guess is not a good guess. Uh, so you just, just try something else because you got stuck in this loop. Um, again, what's happening here with, with Newton's method is we have some function 
trying to find zeros of it. Um, let's say I want to find this zero right here. Uh, pick a point on it, get your tangent line, and then it gives solve it equal to zero. And then find that point, get its tangent line, boop, find it zero. And notice how we can just keep doing this until we get close enough to the zero for the, practi for the practical purposes that we have. Hey, give those a try. Newton's method is, is really fun to explore. Uh, using the calculator is a super tool for it too. It saves you a ton of uh, kind of computational time. Post any questions you have in the forum or message me with them.